Hi, I'm Rich. This is my 1992 Honda NSX. I say Honda because it's made by the Honda Motor Company, but here in the States, you would know it as the Acura NSX because Acura is their luxury brand here in the States. But uh, you're gonna see the Acura badges on it, but it does say Honda on the door sill. So it's Honda NSX. This is car number 96 for that year. They built about 1,271 cars and uh, this is VIN number 0096, so a really low production, I'm sorry, early production car for the 92 model year. Um, this car takes a lot of styling cues from Ferrari. Uh, you'll notice as we go through a lot of similarities with what Ferrari does with their cars and what they put into this car. One of the coolest things about this car, Honda basically went to their engineers and said, you know, design this car, but they gave them a blank check, which always helps because if you're constrained to a certain dollar amount, you know, you might have to cut corners here and there. And they didn't do that with this car. They really, they got it right. They spent the time and the R&D and everything about this car is amazing. The best way to describe it is they got it right and they didn't have to change it. They did this, they made this car from 19, I think, the end of 1990 all the way up until 2005 on this platform and really the only biggest changes they had were going from the 3.0 v6 to a 3.2 changing from a five speed to a six speed later on and then adding a target top other than that little styling cues and and they took away the pop-up headlights which kind of sucks i'm a big fan of the pop-up headlights it's what i love most about this car but uh Chassis is all the same. It's a monocoque aluminum chassis. The car only weighs roughly 3,000 pounds, but it puts out about 270 horsepower from the factory. I've actually tinted the windows with a ceramic coating, which is really nice to have here in Texas because it keeps that heat down. And then the exhaust, it's a catback system. It's an ARC exhaust, ARK. It's just a really nice stainless steel exhaust. It's not too droney. It sounds really good at higher RPMs. Um, and that's about it. I, I like the car as stock as possible. They did a really nice job overall designing this whole car. Everything is accessible. They didn't stick stuff where you can't get to it. So, you know, just recently I flushed the brake system. You can see it's got the master cylinder here. Everything's accessible. Here's the ABS system. You can access that very easily. Uh, the trickiest thing to get to would be the battery, but really all you have to do is undo the spare tire here, pull it out, and you've got access to the battery. They just tucked it down in there. Very, very simple, very clean. You know, all the fuse boxes and everything. You can get to everything. There's, there's no mystery here when you open this thing up. Let's see. Nice and tight. And my favorite, favorite part of this car, this is one of the reasons I had to buy this car. Pop-up headlights. I mean, nothing says 1990s like pop-up headlights. I just, I love it. Sometimes I'll just put them up during the day just to drive around because it's just, it's cool. So again, this is car 96. So I just made that with my sticker machine and stuck it on there. Since it is, you know, an early production of the car. Um, again, a lot of the styling cues Honda did bar borrow from Ferrari. Like a lot of the Ferraris of that era, your door handle is right here. So I have a 308 and it opens almost identical right here. Same with the, the scoop. You know, the Ferrari has the scoops right here as well. These are functional. And of course it's a mid engine car. It's a 3.0 V6, 270 horsepower from the factory with a five speed manual gearbox. Let's see. Um, these cars from the factory right here would say Acura and just to kind of personalize my car, I actually disassembled this center section 
and took the entire thing apart, took off the Acura sticker, and then I made my own NS-X sticker. And if you know anything about these cars, the reason it's, it's written this way is because it stands for New Sports Car Experimental. So not many people really pick up on that, that it's in kind of a Japanese font. But if you know these cars, you know, it's just one of those little things you look at and go, oh, that's clever. My attempt at being clever. Yeah, I get a lot of grief for putting this sticker on here. Uh, it's more of an inside joke with myself because this car is parked in a garage next to a Ferrari. You know, and this was a car that was built to compete with Ferrari, so hence the sticker. Not everybody gets it, not everybody likes it, but it makes me smile every time I see it. Uh, these cars had these really cool electric uh, rear antennas. I just wanted something a little more sporty, but I, everything that's come off this car, original, has been kept. You know, I'm not a big fan of changing too much, so I have the antenna at home, but I just like the look of this when you step back and you see the overall design of the car, it just kind of flows with the car. Let's open up some stuff. There we go. So the rear glass comes up and a lot of people think that this goes through, but there's actually a separate glass window for the cockpit. So none of the heat from the engine actually makes it into the cockpit. Lift this up and there she is. The heart of the beast. Something else that they did right, you know, compared to some of these other mid-engine cars, they actually left room to work on the car. Um, I've been in here doing little things here and there, but I can get my hands down the size of this engine and I'm able to work on it fairly easy. You know, you don't have to have crazy tools and you don't have to have it up on a lift. Now, when you do the belt service, it is an engine out service but it's good for like six years. So it's, it's not too terribly expensive to do, you know, especially for a car like this. And um, you know, a dealership could probably do your whole belt service for about three grand. Not bad as far as maintenance for six years. So just kind of factor that in if you're ever looking for one of these cars, make sure you ask about the belt service, make sure it's been done correctly. Um, Another big thing is to look for the snap ring. So what happened was on these cars on the transmission, some of the early transmissions had the wrong snap ring installed and they would break or come loose and just destroy your transmission. So this car has actually been corrected uh, at some point in its life before I got it, but it was only, I believe in the 92 year. Um, if you look online, you can find the number of the transmission, there'll be you know, a range. So if you're looking for one of these cars, definitely something to keep in mind and watch out for is that snap ring. Uh, let's see, let's pop open the trunk. This car, I mean, it checks every box for me. You know, it's got the styling, it's got you know, decent amount of horsepower, nothing crazy by today's standards, but look at the trunk space, I mean, this, you got plenty of room in there to throw some luggage and I could blast down to Austin for the weekend, go for a great drive and, and take plenty of stuff with me, you know? It's, it's got modern creature comforts, you know, AC, uh, four wheel disc brakes, all the good stuff, but I mean, this is a 92 for a car that's 30 years old. It, it stands the test of time. Uh, this car has been upgraded, it's got cross drilled and slotted brake rotors, which were very helpful at the track on Wednesday. Uh, let's see, get a little gas gap. <laughs> Everything's on a little button or switch inside. It took me a little while to figure that out when I first bought the car. I flew up to Kansas City and, uh, and purchased it and I drove it home the same day and it was about 600 miles. Yeah, it was, a, I'll tell you what, what a great drive. I mean, the car handles, it's like a giant go-kart. That's the best way to describe this car. 
It's, it's light, it's nimble, and it doesn't have power steering, but the way this car reacts on the road, you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even know that you, you didn't have power steering because even on the track, you know, 80 miles an hour, you're just one hand, not a problem at all. Uh, this car was, is considered red on ivory, and it was one of 49 that were built in 1992. Uh, so it would have had ivory colored seats, which is this, this kind of a white material. Now, the gentleman that had it before me, the seats were kind of beat up, so he replaced them with black seats. And I'm more of a fan of the black seats than the white. So I told him, you know, I don't need the white seats. I'd, I'd rather keep the black. And really the only modifications to the inside of this car have been the original stereo was removed and replaced with a double din and then um, I just changed out the shift knob from the stock one it's just something that's more comfortable for me and my style of driving these cars did these cars did not come with a cup holder and it's probably the only downfall of this car however I did find a little trick you get one from an Acura RSX and you just file it down a little bit and it fits right here in that center console. So anyone who didn't know would probably think it's factory, but it works. So now I can have my coffee when I head to Cars and Coffee. Something cool about the interior of this car that not many people know is it was actually inspired by a fighter jet the way the seats are low and slung back in the swooping lines of the dashboard and the center console, it's really comfortable to be in. Everything that you need, I mean, I don't even have to take my hands off the steering wheel to reach most of the controls. It's just right there at my fingertips, which is really, really nice. You know, everything's close by, except for the stereo, but who cares about that? Um, I'm 5'6", and lucky me, I actually fit all of the supercars which is awesome but if you happen to be taller you will fit in this car with no problems at all the way these seats sit down low and the way they're curved um, you can see how far mine's moved up which allows me some storage space behind but if you're six foot you're gonna miss out on the storage space <laughs> the car to my knowledge has never been painted so this is all original uh, it's, you know, it's got a few dings and, and stuff like that, but this is a car that's been driven, it's been enjoyed, and that's what I specifically looked for. I did not want a low mileage car. I've had low mileage cars in the past, and cars are meant to be driven. You know, these engines, they need the fluids running through them and, and stay warm and all this for the seals. And when you let a car sit, you know, th those things deteriorate. So you got to keep the cars moving and that way you don't have to spend tons of money later going back to you know go through the brake system and all this other stuff to get the car ready for the road again uh, this car has 120,000 miles on it which might translate to about 4,000 miles a year for you know what, a 30, 000, or 30 year old car which isn't bad we think the car was originally owned by some sort of a ball player, maybe a baseball player or a football player, because when you look at the Carfax history, it moved around from major city to major city, but it was never, you know, it never changed hands. It was just registered in all these major cities, Florida, uh, Minnesota. I think it spent some time in Arizona and I'm actually the fourth owner of the car. So, you know, the average ownership of this car was about 12 or 13 years for each person. So I'm very, very happy with it. It's, you know, it's a great car. It, like I said, it checks every box and then some that I didn't even know needed to be checked. You know, this is a car you, it, you've got the Ferrari exotic Italian styling, but you've got the maintenance of a Honda. These cars will go 300,000 plus miles. You know, you just, you keep up on them, keep up on that maintenance. The thing will go forever. It's, it's bulletproof. There's a couple people on YouTube posting videos of their trips and one guy just, he turned 300,000 miles on his trip. There's another uh, YouTuber, he's got a great car. He actually took 
I guess it was a wrecked car at one time. He took the back half of the NSX and made it into a trailer. So he's got this tent thing that sits on top of his main car and then a, another kind of a storage thing on top of the trailer. And it's pretty cool to see. I follow him on Instagram. Um, it's just a why, you know, if I were driving down the highway and this guy passed me, I'd probably get in an accident because I'd be too busy staring at him the entire time. So that'd be wild to see. That's my Acura NSX 1992. Um, thanks for watching. I cover this car and all the stuff that I've been doing to the car on my YouTube channel. It's Mr. Nobody's Garage and uh, just an itty bitty little automotive channel. If you like cars like this and projects like this and seeing average guys work on stuff like this in their garage, check it out, subscribe, and uh, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching. If you would like for me to make a walk around video with you on your vehicle or motorcycle, email me at eric at ericjohnstonphotography.com.